So restabilizing the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis using foods. More on that. So let's pretend for the sake of argument that you have something like PTSD and the most common two things that tend to occur when you are subjected to something like PTSD long term would be that your HP axis gets thrown off. Okay, duh. But secondly, how? How it gets thrown off. Number one, early on, there's there tends to be hyper secretion of cortisol. Two, the cortisol curve gets thrown off. So let's take those each in, in time. Hypersecretion of cortisol, meaning similar to the phenomenon that we see with, say, insulin resistance and the pancreas, when you're subjected to high levels of sugar, and in response, your body has to secrete more insulin to get the sugar out of the blood and into your cells. And it does so in, in response to the amount of sugar, glucose, that is, is taken in. So if there are high levels of sugar, you have to secrete more insulin. You know, it's, it's related, the curve, the response. Similar phenomenon with the adrenals and cortisol. When you're under high stress, the phenomenon is similar to insulin resistance that we see with the pancreas. So high stress means the adrenals become cortisol resistant, let's say. Let's call it, give it that label. Where you have, you have more cortisol needing to be secreted in response to the stress. This, over time, leads to this chronic HPA axis dysfunction and dysregulation. That's one of the pieces that contributes to it. Now, is this the pattern for every single person? Not necessarily, so don't assume that, but this is a tendency with something like PTSD. A second thing to bear in mind is that cortisol is contrary to popular belief or what people might assume about cortisol when we talk about the label of being a stress hormone, is not it's not a bad Thing in and of itself. In fact, you need cortisol. You don't want to eliminate cortisol totally just because it's a stress hormone. What happens is the timing of cortisol is important. So we tend to secrete cortisol in a curve. It goes up early morning and falls basically over the rest of the day, more or less. So it is more of an alertness arousal type hormone that around wake up an hour to a half hour before you wake up it spikes so that it can drive you out of bed get you up and going with your day and help you be alert and then over the course of the day as you wind down then it needs to be at its falling so that you can then go to sleep you can fall asleep so that curve is important. What we see with HPA axis dysregulation and with PTSD in particular would be that the curve gets shifted because either due to the chronic secretion of cortisol, you know, you're getting you're getting subjected to stress, say later in the day, or the stress of dealing with the, whatever that original or chronic um, PTSD inducing thing was then you see where that spikes at the wrong time. And so, while you know, most of us can, can handle um, some spikes in cortisol occasionally, if it's a chronic thing, then it's gonna lead to poor sleep. So then you're gonna have high levels precisely when you're trying to fall asleep. So overall, if I could sum up the theme of the problem with HPA axis dysregulation, it would be more or less this hypercortisol state leads to many of the problems. What can we do nutrition-wise, you say? That's what I'm gonna answer, partially, in series, so tune in. Um, so there was a study that showed that a single meal high in animal protein 
can nearly double the levels of cortisol in the blood within a half an hour of consumption. That is useful information, especially if we're thinking in terms of decreasing the amount of cortisol in the blood in general. Second study that basically compared animal protein consumers and a decreased animal protein consumption group, more vegetables, then subjected both groups to the same stressor. The stressor, I think, was they had to speak publicly and then do some kind of math problem. What they, and then they measured the amounts of cortisol in the blood. So it would be assumed, and it indeed is the fact, that in response to stress, both groups are going are gonna to secrete some cortisol. That's important. You need to. That's good. The question is, how much do you secrete? And you'll note the stressor, a public speaking event, and a math problem. That's the kind of scenario where maybe you want a little cortisol, but not a lot. It's not like a bear. What they found was that the animal protein consuming group secreted, I mean, their spike in cortisol was much more exacerbated. Their roller coaster was much more intense. So, again, imagine what would happen if day after day, at every meal, you're consuming animal protein. You're going to see spikes. You're going to have an exacerbation of, one, the amount of cortisol that goes up. Two, chronically, the levels of cortisol are going to go up. Three, the timing of the cortisol is going to be off. So keeping this in mind in terms of restabilizing the HPA axis, I'm not going to weigh in on, on whether or not you should consume animal protein. What the research shows is that decreasing the amount of animal protein you consume is probably going to help stabilize the HPA axis and shifting the timing. So just reducing the, the animal protein consumption afternoon, I mean midday and afternoon and evening, if you were to just shift the timing and consume what animal protein you consume, consume it in the morning, that itself would have probably a stabilizing effect on your HPA axis, if you, I mean, period. A second thing to note would be consuming green vegetables. There was a study that showed that the effects from uh, the spike in, in cortisol in response to animal protein, those effects were blunted in people who, con who also consumed large amounts of green vegetables. So again, once again, eating more vegetables helps stabilize the HPA axis and decreasing the amount of animal protein in the diet also stabilizes helps restabilize the HPA axis and blunts the total cortisol effect, also blunts the spikes in cortisol. So if you're thinking of trying to shift this curve, the timing is also going to have an effect. So if you're going to consume animal protein, consuming it in the early morning around that time when you want the cortisol spike to be there, and then not consuming it the rest of the day and eating more plant-rich substances, I mean plants in general, will help restabilize your HP axis. Thanks for tuning in. Um, we'll bring more along these lines. Adios.